triple power on how from extreme sequences and I've been saying oh sh all morning as I test what's about to be released from X Lights 2024.9 is going to be uh, a, a, an epic release. Uh, there are more enhancements and changes and bug fixes in this pending release than there has been in a very, very long time. And you saw I was pretty excited last week. And let me just, let me sort of just clear the air about last week because I made a big old mistake. And that was because I didn't have my Windows laptop open or a screenshot. And I told you guys just to blindly believe me about GPU rendering on the Windows. Well, that's not really what happened. Uh, perhaps I'm just old and, and, and confused. But the reality is, is that uh, Scott had created a drop-down list of codecs for hardware video decoding with DirectX, uh, X11 and CUDA and Vulkan and all these things. And I asked for you guys, give me some feedback. And there are a lot of you that said, oh my goodness, it's a huge improvement in render speeds for any of your sequences that have videos and images. That's, well, actually, let's take that back. I think there's some miscommunication, which is not unheard of in this hobby, right? Uh, apparently, it's mostly just video. So if you've got videos, then you can see an improvement. Will they get to the point of using GPU rendering on the windows? I think so, further down the line, but just not yet. But it is an improvement. A lot of people use video in their sequences. I certainly do. All right, all right, we cleared that up, we cleared that up. Uh, next, what's coming out? Uh, there, oh gosh, there's so much. Maybe you can stop it on there. There is a ton of things in this next release. So I'm testing it. I'm part of a testing thing. So I get the beta and, and uh, using test flight on Mac and it gives me a chance to kick the tires. It also gave me the ability to finish a sequence yesterday. 2024.8 was just, whew. oh boy, oh boy. If you're a sequencer, uh, you might've found out if you don't hit uh, control S or command S, drop the little menu down and say, save the sequence, uh, you might lose a whole bunch of work. And in three minutes, actually, uh, because it wasn't auto-saving, I was losing a lot of work on just one model throughout the entire sequence. And I I just hit my limit. I was just frustrated. And I'm just like, oh, there's... I'm usually very patient, but... But I'm taking my family on a pretty long vacation this year, so I need to get a lot of sequencing done. So uh, after working with this uh, test version that will soon be released, man, I, oh, there's so many good things in this. So I'm going to lose my Invisalign. just going to drop out of my teeth like, a, like some crazy old person's false teeth falling out as they're talking. Now, I'm not talking about that Nancy chick from California. Woo, woo, woo. Anywho, I'm gonna have to edit that out now. See what I did there? I made a reference that I shouldn't have, and I'm gonna have to edit that crap out. All right, let's get focused here. I'm going to share with you two things that are coming down the pike that you are going to love. Well, one that you're going to love. One that you are going to love. For the sequencers, uh, you're probably going to like this uh, quite a bit, okay? Let's get into it. Let's just talk about uh, what we can do with aliases at the submodel level. Uh, again, last week, I probably misspoke when I was all excited about submodel uh, aliases being uh, wor working at the submodel group level. Well, that's been there. Uh, what was different was that uh, before, let me just go here to any one of these. Let's just go to GE Space Odyssey. On this triangle all, if I wanted to change the name of this submodel within the group, I had to go to the model. Then I had to go all the way down here, find the submodels. Then I had to find it, whatever it might be called. And then I had to click on action and then I could add edit alias 
And I made a remark in my last Monday Minutes, and Darren Erwin's, uh, <laughs> Daryl Erwin said, hey, that's a really good idea. And so now you could just bypass all this. He's like, you don't need to go here. You can just get out of this. Just cancel it. Yes, I'm sure I want to cancel that. Now you can just go to the submodel itself. Let's say it's square. Mm, let's go find something here. It's got a bunch in there. Oh, actually, I'm already in there. Let me go back up here. Double click. Let's just go find. Yeah, that'll work. Let's say I wanted to change the name of the submodel from Starburst Extreme one cross section to GE Starburst get rid of extreme, whatever I wanted to do. Now I can right click on this and I can select the, where we go, add edit sub model aliases. And now I can go in here and I can either edit one that might be there or I can add one and that creates an alias just for that sub model. So Mr. Daryl Irwin, got another challenge for you here. This is all good and groovy, but if I have, I don't know, 25 submodels in a submodel group, I have to do this 25 times. Might there be a way we could select all of these, right click and have an aliases and have it basically do sort of the auto uh, naming. So in other words, if I took out extreme and it says starburst uh, one cross section one, the next one would know to do starburst uh, cross section two and so on this way it would be sort of like a bulk edit on renaming the aliases because typically in uh, submodel groups there are a lot of submodels so this would be something not that I don't appreciate this because I think this is really cool and being able to right click add edit submodel that that's cool that's way cool and let's not forget at the group level that's been there we can do that we can uh, uh whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, see now this is this is another one so if i can do that at the sub model by right clicking on the sub model uh maybe i could right click here and get to the aliases as well because we live in a right click world so to speak say that seven times fast okay uh because right now as it is i have to go down here and i have to select aliases Okay. The other thing that's kind of cool is that when you are on that sub model, uh, we now get some information down here. It will now tell you the model type, uh, ranges, if it's a uh, what type of layout, default, and it will give you some of the nodes here and the group name. So I don't believe that was there before for the sub model. For the group, sure, you always get this information down here. But I think it might be cool right click and have the aliases option at the group level to change the name right there since we do live in a right click world. All right, there we go. I thought that was really, really cool. So that's one of the neat ones. And by the way, this will be a shorter video because I'm not gonna go through these. I mean, literally, they're like, feels like there's 50 to 60 different things. And there was another release just earlier this morning of some changes. So uh, I think they're gonna really make sure that this is tested out before they release it. So do be patient, you'll be just fine. If you are using 2024.8 right now, just hit save more often than you would if you're mapping and sequencing, okay? Don't wait the three minutes. That has been fixed in this one, as far as I know. Uh, and let's just see here, I've been testing it and da, 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 canvas test 935 maybe it has i hope it has all right let's get to the one thing that i have been waiting for for many 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 years ever since i started working with uh models and groups and submodel groups to create these really fun effects there's been one Achilles heel to X lights that slows down the entire process. And in 2016, 2017, even parts of 2018, I think, uh, if you got it wrong, it was a hot mess. I mean, you had to do things manually when creating sub-model groups. So you create the group, then you'd have to 
arrow over the sub models and then you'd have to put things in order and it was just a very archaic way to working with sub model groups and then there was the advent of being able to export your sub model and include the sub models within it so that when you imported it back in not only would it bring in the model and the sub model groups it would put them in the correct order and you're sort of one and done so if i wanted to add uh a third gilbert engineering star lord i would need to right click export x lights model so i do this and i say okay where do you want to go go to the desktop sure and then once i did that I would need to choose whatever sub model groups I want in it. So in this case, I want the cross, diamond, even odd. So, so you do this, or you could just right click, select all, and then if you didn't want these, just to select these. You do this, and this would export an X Lights model that you could import back in. And when you did it, prompt you and say, hey, I recognize these submodels. I recognize these groups. Should you should you allow me to put everything in its nice little place? And you go, yes, please. That'd be lovely. Yeah, you don't have to do that anymore. Or soon, you're not going to have to do that anymore. Want to see something really cool? What I'm going to do is I'm going to edit, copy, edit, paste. Uh oh, we've got something we've never seen before. Add to groups? Should I add model to the same group or groups? Keyword groups, plural, as the original. Yeah, yeah, I think that sounds groovy. And you click yes. And what has happened? <gasps> Whoa, okay. Did it give it a name? GE Star Lord 3, that's cool. All right. Let's go up here to our groups. Let's go to the GE Star Lord group. Hmm. What do we get here? That's squared. That's not what we're looking for. Star Lord. Where did you go? There you are. Okay, group. So we should see three models light up. Okay. Well, this was easy. We've had this ability that when you, you know, well, it doesn't add them automatically add it to the group. Not in the past, but now, you know, that that'd be a good start. I'd be happy to manually do this. But what about all the submodel groups? The arms, plungers, blah, blah, blah. Look over here. Click on this. I see them all lit up. Uh, spokes. Spokes. Spokes on all of them. I've been squawking about this for years. How is it we can finally get the center point defined in your layout, but we couldn't get the rest of this to automatically copy and paste and just go into its home. And I believe now we can't, I, I, I think, mm, I think this is the work of Daryl Irwin. I'm pretty sure. Uh, he has been great about taking uh, comments, feedback, squawking, complaining, you name it, and you know, turning lemons into lemonade. And I tell you what, we should all be thankful that the developers are putting this type of work into this open source software. Again, we are all gonna benefit from this. This is great, but do, do they work? Are these gonna work? So let's go over to my sequencer and I'm gonna click on this effect here. I didn't even have to render. It sees all three. How about the sub models? Oh, look at that. Star-Lord 1, Star-Lord 2, Star-Lord 3. So what does this mean? What does this mean to you and to me? Well, what this means is instead of having to spend tedious amounts of time and effort to add onto your show more models of the same and submodels and submodel groups, this does it for you automatically once again. Copy and paste is now going to be suggested, permissible, absolutely uh, excitable, <laughs> if you could say such a thing about working with software. But this is huge. This is absolutely huge. 
especially some of these more complex models like click click boom from Gilbert Engineering, copy paste. It's going to put all the submodels in there. You're done, one and done. It's going to keep all the structure and order together. Nothing changes. It's copy and pasting. That's beautiful. So thank you, XLice developers, for making my day brighter and for making the rest of our shows a bit more special and making it possible to add on with uh, less effort, less mistakes. That's pretty cool. I'm excited about this. I can't wait to share more. I'm sure uh, Daryl's probably going to create a uh, video walking through some of this. It's probably going to be a very, very long video. I am not going to go through all of it until they finish making more modifications. And I'll pick out the ones that I understand well enough that apply to what we typically do on a daily basis, whether we're sequencing or working in the layout or mapping. And I, I'll share that with you as time permits. That's all I've got for you today. You take care. Catch you next week. I'm Ron. It's been Monday Minutes. See ya.